Today on Music Production Crash Course, we talk about publishing your music. What's up guys, my name is Gabe Miller and welcome to Music Production Crash Course, the show that's a blatant ripoff of Film Riot and Crash Course. Before I dive into this episode, I'm going to need to mention something real quick. In this video, I'm going to frequently mention a site called Fiverr.com and no, they are not sponsoring this video. I've just found the site incredibly useful for a lot of the stuff I'm about to talk about. Basically, Fiverr is a site where people offer different services called gigs for very affordable prices, usually around five bucks, hence the name Fiverr. So for instance, I've used this site for video intros, including the intro for this show, drawings, including the drawing of my little profile picture guy, and session musicians and singers. And there are a zillion other gigs such as mixing, mastering, album artwork design, video editing, and pretty much anything else you can think of. All right, let's dive into the meat of this episode. So assuming you've got your song finished, mixed, mastered, and sounding awesome, the first thing you need is album artwork. Without artwork, you can't really publish your project, and without good artwork, I would argue that you shouldn't publish Publish your project. People really do judge a book by its cover, so if your artwork sucks, people will automatically assume that your music sucks and probably not even give it a chance. So unless you or someone you know kicks butt at graphic design, I would recommend hiring someone else to do your artwork, and this is one of the places that Fiverr comes in. Go to the site, search album artwork on it, and then choose to rank it by highest rated gigs, and then just spend some time searching through gigs until you find one that you dig. Now that we've got artwork, you're ready to publish your music. Probably the most common question is how to get your music on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, and other services like that. You can't upload directly to any of those places, so you have to go through a service that will do it for you. There are a ton of them out there, but I'm going to recommend a specific one called Louder. I prefer Louder because not only do they distribute to a bunch of different places and they have great customer service, they don't charge you anything up front. You can get your music up to these services for free, and then whenever you sell something, then they take a cut out of it. It's a great system, especially if you're like me, and you're simultaneously a broke college student and a virtually unknown artist. So now you've got your digital music on iTunes and all those other places, but there are a few other places I'd also recommend putting it. The first is Bandcamp. This is a fantastic service that you can upload your music directly to, and it creates your own Bandcamp webpage, and then you can sell waves, MP3s, or other formats directly to your followers. It's free to set up, you get a bigger cut of the money than from Louder, and you can set the price to be whatever you want, or you can let the buyer name their price. The second service is Noise Trade, and this is basically like the iTunes of free music. While not everyone will want to put their whole album up for free, it is a good idea to put a single or maybe a short EP up for free, so people can download their music and there's no risk involved because they're not paying anything and then hopefully they dig it enough to want to buy your full album the final place you should put your digital music is YouTube a lot of people use YouTube to discover new music so you want to make sure you're on there it makes it very easy for you to link to and share your music and have links to download and buy in the description and also makes it much easier for your fans and potential fans to share and discover your music so here's a few different ways that you can go about the visual aspect of posting your music to YouTube First of all, here's what not to do. Don't just slap it up with the album artwork and black bars on the side. That looks lazy and, frankly, kind of ugly. If you want to do a video that just plays the song and displays the artwork, I recommend doing something like what I used to do last year. Basically, it's the artwork, then behind it, the artwork blurred a ton, and in between those, some motion graphics. If you have some experience with graphics, that's pretty simple to do. If not, I made a gig on Fiverr to do exactly this, plus a few variations. Link is in the description. If you want to get a bit more advanced, you could do an audio react visualizer like I have now or a lyric video. There are gigs on Fiverr for this, I would just do a search for it and see what you can find. And finally, of course, you could do a music video, but this is not my area of expertise, so I would recommend checking out a channel like Film Riot. The final thing I'm going to talk about is getting physical copies of your album made, and there are a couple different services that you can do for this. First of all, there's Kunaki at kunaki.com, link in the description. They print CDs and covers on demand, so it doesn't cost you anything up front, and when a CD is ordered, they're dirt cheap. And they're pretty nice! If you want something even higher quality, check Check out CreateSpace at CreateSpace.com. They also print on demand, and their stuff is a bit higher quality and a bit more expensive. Alright, that's it for today. Be sure to subscribe for a new song every other Monday and a new Audio Geek video every other Monday. So basically, they alternate, and you get a new video from me every single week. And be sure to like, comment, share, and all that other good stuff. I'm Gabe, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.